Everyone knows that the main antagonist for the Lord of the Rings story is the Dark Lord Sauron, the creator of the One Ring. Although he is not physically present for the majority of the story, most of the wars and battles happen because of him, because he commands it to happen. But let's not forget that Sauron is little more than a mere captain when compared to his former master, the original Dark Lord, Melkor, also known as Morgoth. But what was the fate of Morgoth? And would it have been possible for him to have returned to take over from Sauron's quest? Let's find out. Hey guys and welcome to the Broken Sword. Sauron may have powerful allies such as the Witch King of Angmar and Saruman the White to help him attempt to wrap a leash around all of Middle-earth, but yet as we all know, he is still not able to achieve victory. Both Tolkien's books and the Lord of the Rings movie adaptions clearly show us that Sauron had previously plagued Middle-earth during the Second Age, but was defeated by the last alliance of elves and men. It wasn't until he rebuilt his strength once more that Middle-earth was faced with a major threat again. This got me thinking. If Sauron was the only real threat to the free peoples of Middle-earth across two ages, which is thousands of years, and he failed on multiple occasions, then how would things have played out if the real big bad of Middle-earth could have played a part? While Morgoth doesn't appear in The Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, he plays a significant role in The Silmarillion and Tolkien's other writings. His reign of terror had a far bigger impact on Middle-earth's history than Sauron's. Originally known as Melkor, Morgoth is essentially the Lucifer of Tolkien's story. Like the devil, Morgoth was one of the first children created by Eru Ilvata, who I guess you could say is the god of Tolkien's world. But Morgoth succumbed to jealousy and greed, especially over the creation of other beings and races, not necessarily purely down to their existence, but because he desired the ability to create more than anything. His jealousy, greed and anger led to him being disowned by his fellow Valar. Most of these events transpired before even the elves came into existence, but Morgoth's anger would rage for years to come. Now I don't want to spend a huge chunk of your time here covering the full history and story of Morgoth, as it's a very long one and we already have a full video on that which is over 40 minutes long. I'll try and remember to leave a link in the description down below if you want to check that one out. I genuinely think it's one of our best. So the goal of this video is to discover Morgoth's ultimate fate, to try and figure out if it would have been at all possible for him to return. So what happened to Morgoth? Well, after a huge battle between Morgoth's forces and a host of Valinor, where Morgoth's army was completely obliterated, and he fled into the deepest of his mines, he looked for peace and pardon. But the Valar crippled him and cast him upon his face. He was bound with the chain and Gynor, his iron crown was beaten into a collar for his neck, and he was taken from the earth and thrust through the door of night into the timeless void, where it was intended for him to remain for all eternity. However, in some unpublished writings, Tolkien had suggested that Malkor would one day return at the Dagor Dagorath, or the Battle of All Battles. Now, this is technically not canon, however many fans choose to believe it as canon. Let me explain. The published version of the Silmarillion ends with the voyage of Erendil. This was purely an editorial choice made by Tolkien's son, Christopher. The original Silmarillion, as Tolkien had initially intended, was to end with a prophecy by Mandos about the Dagor Dagorath. The account is clearly inspired by and bears many similarities to the Norse legend of Ragnarok, but also quite similar to the biblical Armageddon. So what was originally supposed to happen at the final battle? Well, according to the prophecy, Morgoth will discover how to break free from the door of night and will blacken the sun and the moon. For the love of these, Irendil would return from the sky and shall meet Tolkas, Manwe, Eonwe and Turin Turumbar on the plains of Valinor. There the forces of the Valar shall fight against Malkor and the Dark Powers. Tolkas will wrestle with Morgoth, but it will be by the hand of Turin that finally death and destruction will be dealt to Melkor. Turin will run his black sword Gurthang through Malkor's heart, thus avenging the children of Hurin and all of the fallen. Then the three Silmarils will be recovered from the earth, sea and sky, Feanor will break them, and with their fire Ivana will rekindle the two trees. A great light shall come forth, and the Pelori mountains will be levelled. The battle will end, renewing Arda's existence, all the elves will awaken and the powers will be young again, essentially restarting the world. 
Now, even if this is not officially canon, nothing about Morgoth's initial banishment in the published writings have changed from the version that includes the Dagor Dagorath. So surely that means it absolutely is within the realm of possibility that Morgoth could have returned. And if he did, what would have happened? Well, that would certainly be fun for a what if video. If you guys would like to see us attempt something like that, let us know in the comments down below. One thing we can say for sure, Sauron never came close to achieving the sheer scale of death and destruction that Morgoth had committed, for it was the wayward Valar who introduced darkness to Middle-earth in the first place. If, hypothetically, Morgoth could have made a grand return during the War of the Ring, Sauron definitely would have bent the knee to his former master. Before we go, I'm extremely excited to share with you info on today's sponsor. It's us. That's right, we sponsored ourselves, but only because it's something we think you guys will be into. If you're into tabletop gaming, 3D printing, or miniature painting, then you'll hopefully be interested in checking out the Tabletop Alliance Patreon or web store. By signing up to the Patreon, you get access to monthly releases for a discounted price. We have lots of different tiers depending on what you're interested in. We have a fantasy option, a sci-fi option, or an option for both. You can also choose between receiving your monthly deliveries as physical resin miniatures, or if you would rather print them yourselves, you can opt to have them as digital STL files for a lower cost. We are honestly so proud of our custom characters, and we think you guys will love them. They fit in perfect to whatever tabletop game you are playing, whether it be proxies for Middle Earth, or Warhammer, or even a D&D campaign. Or maybe you're just looking for something new to paint, there is a ton of variety. If Patreon isn't for you, you can purchase individual models through our web store, again available in physical or digital. Also, if you guys buy anything, paint it and send us a picture, we will send you a 50% off discount code for your next purchase. I would also like to clarify that this is a completely separate Patreon, so if you're a patron for the Broken Sword, that's totally different. And speaking of Patreon, time has come as always to thank our amazing patrons. Your support means the world, we are still saving towards our short film, and we have recently been looking at some filming locations, and it's getting us super excited. If you're not aware, the Patreon on this channel goes towards a budget for our short film, which is called The Guard. It's about a group of warriors in a time of peace. Or at least, that's how it starts. Anyway, that's it from me today, my friends. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you next time on The Broken Sword. Mm -hmm.